The most stunning golf courses begin with a vision and a plan. Whispering Pines began with the pine bark beetle. And those beetles were invading the piney forest of Corby Robertson's property. Whispering Pines founder Corby Robertson, former All-American linebacker for the University of Texas, business owner, philanthropist, and visionary, decided to do something about the beetles. We've been here for probably 20 years on this site before we tried to start Whispering Pines, which opened in 2001. And essentially, it was all just woods. And uh, we basically had a bunch of beetles that were eating our trees. Okay, and pine bark beetles are a menace here in East Texas. And so we decided that we were going to go harvest the trees. And in the process of harvesting the trees, we'd go build a golf course. But Whispering Pines didn't start out with the idea of being a championship golf course. Rather, kind of a backyard fun course with its own name. And what started is a, not a full grown golf course, but an off course. So uh, off was golf without the greens. So we've got a wash tub about this big instead of shooting at a hole about this big. And a real motor, you know, cleared the thing for a golf course. You know, we built the Austin Country Club. I was the developer of the Austin Country Club with Pete Dice. So I built a, you know, full grown course before. So I had some idea what to do. So I routed in this golf course while we were clearing these trees and we made a big mistake. We got Jay Bear to be our consultant to go help us with the golf program at Camp Olympia. Jay Bear is the legendary Junius Joseph Bear, winner of the 1960 PGA Championship and friend of Corby Robertson and Chris Gilbert. And Jay came out here and is a wonderful man and, you know, just one of the, the greatest people in golf ever. A dear friend of the Gilbert family. And so he came out and said, this is great. You ought to go make this into a golf course. So we built a few holes and we liked it. And then we built a few more. And then we finally outreached our irrigation system from Cairns. And so, in true Texas style, Corby decided to go big when he envisioned a golf course. But not just any golf course with Spring Pines, which begins with a scenic drive through the woods, around a cove, past the Augusta-like cottages, and up to the 400-acre tour-quality fairways, pristine surroundings, and picture-perfect greens that has earned it recognition as the number one golf course in Texas year after year. He hired Chet Williams of Nicholas Designs to route and design the course. Their team created one of the best-kept secrets in golf. But Corby doesn't want it to be the best kept secret. He wants you to hear of it for one reason, the spirit. If you're gonna build a big golf course out here, why would you build a golf course in the middle of nowhere? Well, the only good reason we can think is to do the Olympics for golf and set this up for charity. It was the inspiration for doing this is to say, well, what does golf is lacking? The only thing that I could think, there's a tournament every weekend somewhere. So the only thing that lacks from my perspective was the Olympics. And Chris and I were both amateur athletes. We never really became pros. And so the idea of amateur athletes is something that uh, I guess we really cottoned to and felt that it would be an additive uh, element to the game of golf. And cotton to it he did. In 2001, an Olympic-style International Amateur Golf Championship was born and has seen competitors, coaches, and world-class amateurs from all over the globe. But Corby's vision even reaches beyond the spirit. If you said, how do you be a member of Whispering Pines? You give money to charity. Each member's contribution goes toward charities and initiatives that Corby himself has started, overseen, or has a passion for. Junior Golf's First Tee Program, an immunization registry for children, Baylor College of Medicine's Teen Clinic and Information Exchange, and Medical Bridges. What started as a pest in his trees has turned into a product of serendipity, and Corby is the first to recognize the gift that the piney forest on Lake Livingston has provided. Sounding every bit like old Tom Morris, Corby said that he follows the natural features that Mother Nature put into place. There's a graceful way about this, and it doesn't have anything to do with me, or Chris, or any of us. Uh, Mother Nature is doing it all, and, and frankly, as you would go through the next, I would say, six weeks. Different trees will light up at different times and so the fall colors as it's coming on around here ought to make for some real beauty. And we've tried not to disturb that, we've tried to enhance it. 